Pasha Paro, YNS7. Thank you for tuning. Got the wonderful, the beautiful Vernita T with us today. All right. LPN, cannabis nurse, consultant, tincture specialist, DBCA, herbalist, pure herbs, LTD distributor. Give us the intro. Oh, <laughs> um, you know what? It is so hard to describe me um, because of the different levels that I, I am, who I am, yes. um, especially the last couple of years, you know, with the healing and everything that's going on in the world. So it is so hard to describe me. Um, but all around, I am a healer because um, I have healed myself and continue to heal myself and working through the different traumas um, that I've basically created for myself. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the one of the big things is um, knowing who, who I am. Um, and I'm not sure of your audience, but um, yeah, I can get really, really deep. Oh, uh, yeah. Why that seven? We we take it deep all the time. We live in the deep, all right? That that's why they don't see us that often. Like where they at? We deep. We too deep. At the same time, we too high. So mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of distance and space in the middle there. Um, you were asking about the glasses right before we started, yeah. and it's it's a it's a great question that people ask, and I'm sure people wonder when they when they watch me, why do you wear the glasses? One, uh. You talk about healing and health. So computer screens emit a lot of blue, actually TVs, I guess, in general. They emit a lot of blue wavelength, which is damaging to the eyes. So if you spend a lot of time in front of the computer at work or producing stuff, um, you know, I do music, I do this, I do that, photo, you know, logos. So I'm in the computer, in front of the computer a lot. So what happens is just simply wearing sunglasses reduces eye fatigue. And the damage that the, the screen emitting energy, it minimizes that somewhat. Now, the other element that I found useful is when you're working the controls, let's say I'm in the middle of this broadcast right now, and I'm working the controls and everything, you know that you can pay attention while you're doing something else, but people like to see eye contact, right? Yeah. To make yeah. you feel like you're listening. Um, this allows me to be able to function and do what I got to do on a screen without the audience or the people watching feeling like, oh, he's not paying us no attention. Because as soon as I look this way on the monitor, it's like, he's not looking at me. You know what I mean? So it helps okay. negate that and allows me to function the controls without losing uh, the people that enjoy the eye-to-eye -eye contact. You know what I'm saying? So it's got a couple, okay. it's multifaceted. So. Okay, well, can I respond to that? Because sure, please do. I would like to respond. Uh, well, I'm a t the type of healer in person because I read. That's how we, you know, we uh first first met. Well, I read, mm -hmm. and um, I read energy. I read people. Um, I assess as a nurse, and one um one of the things that uh is incorporated in that is the eyes. Mm. Um, so if you don't mind, that's why I asked the question before we started. Um, if you don't mind, can I see your eyes? Sure. Temporarily. Yes, just. Thank you. And then I had, uh, and I had Bell's palsy, not, you know, at one point. So I still have that quote unquote scar on the left side. So. Mm -hmm. You know, not to say it's it's pronounced or anything now, but um, the primary reason I use them because light protect the eyes and uh, allows me to work these controls. So what we want to get into today, right, is the protection of our women. It's a big issue right now because women don't feel protected in general, right? We got a lot of outcry from the from the women in the community saying they want men to stand up and protect them. I, I want to talk to you because there's a lot compressed compiled into that, that maybe it sounds simple when you're just focused on the emotional attachment. Um, but there's a lot of cause and effect issues that I wonder mm -hmm. if we on both sides have uh, observed. So let me, let's review the word real quick, the etymology. The protect is to defend or guard from harm or danger. Okay. You see? So with that being the case, how do we define 
defense? What are we defending our community from? What are we guarding our people from? That that what do we see as harm or what do we acknowledge as danger? And I think we have to start there to assess uh, the requirement of men to protect the women in the community. Because if we haven't properly assessed what the danger is, what the harm now and future state, then how can one appreciate guidance and instructions, protection in general? Let's let's open there. What do you think about that? Well, for me, um, I've asked for protection. I have not personally, you know, felt protected mm -hmm. um, since childhood. Right. But now that you know, I've gone through a lot of healing phases and looked at myself, I understand um, the dynamics, some of the dynamics between um, the masculine and the feminine and the one that we are mm -hmm. together. And so um, and understanding that split that happened, it was definitely a split. It was a disconnect. If, if, if because, you know, with the words, I'm so glad you brought out the dictionary because we have to go not only back to the dictionary, but um, the language of Hebrew, the Hebrew language and understanding that because the English language is the uh, newest language. Right. Um, and it's one that's filled with spells. Equivocal. Yes. Yeah. So we um we really have to understand the wordage of, of things, but our issues our issues uh, come from that that very beginning of the split between that masculine and the feminine. It has nothing to do with anybody else, but the one that is the split. I I like that perspective and feel confident that you're in the right place because Ynet Seven was built on etymology uh my original observation was that once we get the people to understand that the words we use every day mean something totally different it'll help us better understand things like law the law of attraction all that good stuff right so nice. i'm glad that you bring up the split because i always mention this quote when we get anywhere around this subject when you control the women of a population a byproduct or in success of that, you control the men. So if you want to control a population, you simply control the women. How has that been thought of in the, in the woman community that maybe these benefits being offered to them all of a sudden and, and and by all means, this is not saying that women shouldn't have like high ranking positions at corporations or any of that type of stuff that's going to be backlash. Like, oh, Pasha said this. No, Pasha's not saying that. Pasha is saying, have we thought about the enchantment of the enticing, the dangling of the carrot, knowing the emotional ramifications that would follow as programming to destroy a population? Have the women in our community gathered and had that conversation together? Well, I can't speak for all of the women in the community. I can only speak for myself. Yes. Yeah, I, I can't because I'm, I'm, I don't do what others do. I like that. <laughs> so I, I can't speak for what others do. I can only speak for my experience. Let me rephrase the question. What would be the pros and cons of the women in our community? gathering and having the conversation of, hey, you know what? Maybe some of these things that have caused us to look at our men and place them in a weakened state, like child support, like uh, any of these other things, right? Um, maybe that's an attack against our people and we have to be aware of that so that we can rebalance the situation and repurpose our attitudes for the success long-term. 
what would be the pros and cons of that conversation coming up based on your experience and observations? Based on my experience and observations, those conversations have happened. Mm, and um, it, the experiences and, and conversations that I've been a part of, it stems back to um, the men. But then it is a cycle because it also the women are to blame because we are in the position that we are because of when the split happened, the they, they're, the women sat back. The women sat back and allowed the men to uh, do what they wanted to do. Okay. And here you see on the screen the word tort from legal definitions is a wrong a private or civil wrong or injury right so if if we take this to a simple statement of hey this is what i think you should do and the women are like we ain't gotta listen to you no more right <laughs> i'm just you know making it theatrical and um then they go down this path and they get to a point where they find injury or, or fault done to them, wrong done to them. Then they blame the men for not being there. And this is not an example of every woman and every case. I'm just, we're talking about a very finite field of play here. So in those cases, then, then they want to blame the men for not being there, not realizing or accepting that in their own way, fashion, style, swag, they basically told the men not to be there. What does that, how does that register in the moment of panic? From my observations yes. and from the work that I have done, um, not only on myself, but in helping other women to work through their traumas. Yes. I don't think that the men understand where um, certain traumas start at and why women have that disconnect, why girls have that disconnect, mm -hmm. because many times, um, I'll say all times, because you know that um, a lot of the healing that starts, it has to start with the inner childhood, um, that shadow work, you know, that, that, that childhood healing, and that childhood healing for many, many girls, they have been violated by their first loves, which is their father. They have been violated by their brothers, their uncles, their cousins. And so that disconnect happens very, very early, very early mm -hmm. in life. So if you are set up and already programmed with the thought of and the experience of the man that was supposed to love me first, violated me did not protect me you you get what I'm saying so by the time yeah. they're at a certain age and um we love our men we love our men so at a certain age where if we interact on a different level those scars are already there agreed and now we flip that coin right and I'm glad you brought up the programming factor because what what stemmed this conversation is I made a post uh, with some comments centered around this topic. And then I said, you know, who out there want to talk about this? And you were encouraged enough to to be here today. And I, I appreciate that and accept that for value. So when you spoke about programming, it reminded me of the first part of that, that post where I said, the observation is, and then I started, there are many men today who were once young men who got 12 to 27 calls a year from their sisters, right? Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, it's their mothers to come fuck up the dude that they talking to, right? As a brother or son for doing them wrong, creating a tort a injury, right? Of all the different in infinite ways that could happen. Maybe you show up the first time and then you tell them, hey, look, you shouldn't be in this situation. Now, some of these sisters would, would, would share how, you know, um, the man that they they were doing them wrong with or stealing from them, but then when the brother or the son would step up to do something about it, down there being blamed, oh, you're ruining my relationship, my marriage, you're messing up my household, 
You're my son. Stay in your place. You know, whatever, right? So we come to the rescue and then we're demonized for doing so. However, if we go too far, we're demonized for doing damage. And then eventually, if you keep answering the phone, you're in a cycle of insanity because you're coming to the rescue expecting a different result. And then they wind up back with them two weeks later, right? So there's this thing that they teach you in Boy Scouts. And I'll, and I'll, I'll close here and I want to hear your input where in life-saving is drowning victim. They teach you to swim out far enough and stop before they can reach you and give instructions. Because in a panic, the person you're trying to save will also drown you. So at a very early age, some of us through either training like that or life training, we're taught to stop and give instructions. And if they don't follow your instructions, you were taught to watch them drown. So how does this, from the men's side, we've been programmed too in a lot of cases, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you watch, many of us watch their mothers get beat and then go back the next week. When many of us watch their mothers hop out the car and bust a dude's window out. And you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so how, do, I'm glad you brought the programming. And then how does that apply to the disconnect with, oh, we don't have to follow you guys and how that, like I said, the following of instructions or let them drown. Granted, when it works and you guys are very successful, great. But there's this other side of the coin that we have to kind of manage. What do you feel about that? From your well, I feel like from my perspective, there are many sides to that coin because yes. uh, and many programs because um, the one that I understand, um, I watch um, my male cousins. I'm, I, I come from a family with mostly girls, so it's, it's not a lot of men, but the men in the family are protectors. Um, but they're also predators, put it like that. They're protectors, but also predators. Um, so I knew not to call them but I watched other family members call them in the results so that I, that same cycle. So I can't speak on it personally, like from calling a man for the protect protection, I, I would protect myself I, in, in all of the different situations because I didn't have from a very young age, I, I knew not to call. Mm -hmm. I knew not to call for different, different situations, right. you know, um, the fair failure for me, and again, the the, the women that I I work with, happened so early. That that's where the um the feeling of not being protected throughout the the lifetime happened. So I I can't say on the experience that you are talking about, mm -hmm. but what I can say is on that experience how um the women can sometimes damage the sons on not calling for protection. Um, and knowing that the men that were out there protecting were also predators mm. from that standpoint. Okay. Yeah. So, so it is, it, it is very, it is so layered. The damages exactly. that, that have happened, you know what I'm saying? It's not just one program for the hurt and for the disconnect that did happen. It's deep. It is very, very deep. Right. Yeah. And, and the healing that has, I'm, I appreciate the conversation because the healing has to happen. And I'm going to say also on the women's side that, that are in the position that I'm in, because I have a son that he, he's, he's the hurt me. And I'm looking at it like, oh my gosh, you, you are me hurt. And, you know, and on the heel side, now that I'm on the heel side, he's the male version of me that, that, that is going through the same thing that I went through, mm. but the male version side. I can see that without a lot of the, the the sexual things that that because that generational curse was broken. I was able to to break that generational curse, but the abandonment issues because I was traumatized and dealing with my abandonment issues. I didn't realize I was causing the same thing to him. You know what I you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So. On that perspective, I can I have much input on that. Okay, so so that that is a factor too because because of those abandonment issues, um, you 
you want to minimize the risk and the and the potential to be disappointed or putting expectations on others. So if you it's like that song, uh, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. That's embedded in people's minds. Like, OK, why would I put myself out there knowing that um, 90 percent of this society has this abandonment issue in the back of their mind? So it prevents them from going. But so far. Because like you're just going to be somewhere else next year, ten years from now, anyway, you know. So what's what's the worth of the investment? Um, I think that's a great point too. Because if people felt like longevity, what's the stability in relationships? They would probably go harder for each other. Yeah, yeah. So, but when it comes uh, to the relationship between mother and son, and, and husband and wife, that right there, you know. Um, we really have to do a lot of healing. And uh, again, I'm, I appreciate the conversation uh, because on the on the post, you ex- you exposed yourself on the post with the relationship that you, I'm guessing, was it your relationship with your mother or was it just in general a relationship? Intertwined was my personal experiences and mm-hmm. observations. That's okay. the beauty of knowledge for me. It's, it's You can learn from your experiences and watching right. others too. Right, right. And so I connected with that again because of the relationship I have with my son, but on a different, mm-hmm. like on a different level, but it's still a disconnect that happened. I think I think one thing that you'll find fascinating here is that I I like to I'm a man of equations, not variables. So I speak in variabilistic terms sometimes just for the sake of uh theatrics of the conversation. Okay. However, I'm always speaking about the infinity, not any one variable because we'll lose sight of most of the equation by focusing on just one X, Y intercept, right? Because right. all the truth is always infinite. So yes. I think um I think that brings me into this quote here that I took from this article about uh what what women mean when they say they don't need a man. And the quote in there, uh this one quote I thought was interesting. It said, I don't need a man I also don't need to eat bacon or drink red wine or wear mascara, but I enjoy them and they make my life better. So what we're expressing here is that there were some, there were some elements intertwined in a lot of people's lives where they're willing to sacrifice the betterness of the relationship for a perception of something, right? that they feel is better, what we want to call it peace or uh, whatever, something is different for everybody mm-hmm. until they need it. And then they're wondering why it's not there. If we could speak in general terms, you know, it's like uh, you speak about, Hey, your driver, you're not a, you're, you, you, you told her, you got everybody the opportunity to say, look, you're a traveler, not a driver. Right. They turn their back on you. They walk away from you. They call you crazy. But then when they get a ticket, they call you, hey, can you help me with this? Well, we just spent five years arguing about why you should learn it and you still have it. Why should I invest it in now? Or why should I help you with this now? Then you become the bad guy because, oh, he ain't shit. When I called him for help, he wasn't there. No, that's what you're going to go tell everybody to make the emotional stir. But in reality, and it's, it's a quote in business, I'll tie this to after I hear, hear your perspective. The reality is, like I said, we spent five years trying to prevent this situation from being relevant. But it wasn't valued then until you were in the, until that person was in the panic. How does that dynamic work? How do how do we overcome from both sides that gap of value before it's needed being realized? That is why I'm here. That is why I'm here, because I, I don't yes. know. We we are at that point where we both sides are are like, okay, I feel undervalued. I feel not heard. I feel all, both sides are there. Mm-hmm. So before it was um us with our backs at each other's, screaming it out, right, and and the voices going that way, and neither hearing. If you if you get my picture, how mm-hmm. how. I'm a visual person. I can see it in my head. No, that's good. That's good. But um, 
at this point in space and time, we've, we've been able to turn around and face each other and be able to hear each other um, because the blinders are off and uh, we can now see and we can now hear. So yeah. we're back at that space. I, I can take blame for, you know, as a woman, because not all of us have the blinders off and the ears. And But for me, I know well, there ain't nothing worse than a black woman's scorn. And when a black woman just sit back and, <laughs> and let you have the seat and do what you want to do. And, you know, um, but a black woman has been scorned. Yeah. And, and yeah. we are, this is all of this is the repercussions of that. Yeah. And then when you get into the magic of it, right, we know that we're transducers and we're at we're at the 10 minute point. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see. So we're transducers and we got to understand that that magic, we're, we're manifesting that. And if we don't yeah. alter our perception, this is how anything or anybody that you want to call our ops or our enemies is winning. Like I said, if you want to control the population, you control the women. So if you look in the 1970s, right? Uh, not to say that these words weren't being shared prior to that, but this became a thing in the 1970s, a real big push, like the whole women don't need men. And if you look since then, look at the feminization of the black male or, or the United States citizen male, period, right? Look at when this exploded. The women control the men. So if the if the if the enemy wants weaker men, you put the women in a position where they feel like they don't need the men, it's going to then by default effeminize the men to uh be appealing to the women who feel like they don't need men. Because now when you have someone come and give you true guidance, right? You're looking, not you personally, but generally speaking, you're looking for the 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 other reaction, right? Because you're manifesting this in a society. So now the the strong ones become demonized. The the uh, thing I wanted to tie to in business is a study done by Simon Sinek that I refer to often. And what they found there is that large corporations, or um, let me say the study was shared to me through Simon Sinek in, in my readings of his, large corporations reward the people who step up in the panic. Now, as I described this, think about the community, the hood, school, whatever, right? Your regular life shit. Corporations reward the people who step up in the panic. Oh man, the machines went down. So-and-so and his team stayed, worked 27 hours overtime, got it back up and running. We're going to put a plaque on the wall. Congratulations team. But that same incident, they told the person that was warning them two months earlier, two years earlier, we need to do this so this doesn't happen. They told them to shut the fuck up. They, you, you crazy, you know, we don't need to listen to you. And the same like example of this women, men dynamic related to what we're talking about here, not, the, not everybody in every situation. So then because they didn't listen, they didn't reward or appreciate the person two years, two months ago that said, hey, we need to do something about this. We need to make this change. Now the panic happens in every war who steps up in the panic when all of that could have been avoided. I see that example as such a parallel to our society where it is. And unless something is done about it, the collision course or the crash course that we're on five, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, the next generation. Speak on that observation for me from your perspective. Well, actually, I have been in that position where I have been the one um, yelling out, and then two or three. Especially years, being a like, healer, right? <laughs> it's like <I'm, laughs> as I, I that I'm in that situation now, where I've left the United States two years ago. Um, so congratulations, I, I'm right there. Thank you. But I I know that we have to stop speaking to everyone, and only start addressing the ones that were the ones that were deemed crazy mm -hmm. um we we really have to cater to that audience um and stop catering to the ones that don't have the knowledge um 
that there was a setup that we do have to take responsibility. Um, where are we at? Hmm? You, where are we at with time? Because I know you said- Oh, five, five minutes, 30 seconds, go okay. ahead. Okay, okay. Um, we do have to take responsibility. We do have to take responsibility and then we have to have these type of discussions um, to be able to move on. Mm -hmm. Because um, if we keep focusing on the uh, ones that look like us, but are our ops, they are ops. They are ops. So we have to, the, the ones that are like us is evident. Our mm -hmm. light is shining. Our light is shining. So we have to focus the conversation on what do we do now or what do we do to heal everything that, that has transpired? Because it has transpired. It has transpired. Yes. Um, what are the steps in healing? What are the steps in, uh, and one of the steps again is that acknowledgement from both sides because both of us, all of us in, in that dynamic have done something to hurt each other. And if, if, if we don't uh, acknowledge that that hurt is even there, um, then there is nothing that, that we will continue on the path of destruction, which is going to happen for many anyway. It has to happen because as we're healing, we're creating. Yes, we're, yes. we're knowing who we are as one and we are recreating um, what was what is being destroyed. Put it like that. Yeah, yeah. Pyro Nakota Wooded is Great House, Distinguished, Restore. And if you ask me what the Great House is, it's your heart, your mind, then your body, then your household, then your community, and mm -hmm. eventually scale up to the nation. Okay? Yes. So that's what we're doing. We're at a time period where everybody is coming together in purpose. So you're a healer, you know, in your fashion, in your swag. I'm a healer. Like I said, we have to heal. And I like that you brought up the acknowledgement factor, because I always perceive this as an addiction. And the first mm -hmm. part of any addiction is denial. So we have to look at us being ill, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we're denying it because then once we agree on what the problem is, everybody wants direction, right? Either they want to get it or they want to give it, but this focus is direction. I'm the boss or you ain't bossing me. It's direction. What we need to do is learn how to shift to destination being the focus. Once destination is the focus, now we can see how our actions either are keeping us on course or off a of course. And we can agree upon that. Right now, we don't have any agreements because we're scattered. Mm -hmm. Two minutes and change. Give your closing remarks. And what I want to do is have more conversation with you in the future. We can span on this and other topics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I thank you again. I appreciate the conversation. This is very short. You know, I'm very long winded. So this was um, this was very interesting. And I do know that that it needs to be uh, further because we have to again, we have to stop focusing on those that um, have been part of, of. We have had to be part of the movement. That's what I'm getting. We have had to be part of the movement the queens have to be able to move everywhere. And so the lessons over these several hundreds of years that have been learned, have been learned for a reason. So in us coming together, um, that movement, that feminine movement that happened, that really had nothing to do with us. Again, we, we a lot of us sat back and allowed for it to happen, but we learned um, in the same instance. And we have been placed in places that can help our kings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and the, the king and king, queen, and uh, god and goddesses. If you want to go that far, um, it's time. It's like I said, they're coming together now because we were placed in this position, maybe in advance of others, because we were here to aid in the ascension process. Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't have the emotional attachment of blame for others. We're just here to encourage and and, and guide those who are meant to receive the transition at this moment will receive it. Who this is for will get it. And that's the beauty of um, magnetics. So uh, Pasha Paro, why that seven? Yes, this was absolutely condensed. I liked it. I accepted the challenge of the condensed format. And we'll be back with more. 
with Renita in the future. Thank you so much for your time today.